Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the dark comedy thrills of Creepshow, specifically the new series that was adapted from the movie that was released in 1982. The film holds a special, bloody place in my heart. It was directed by George A. Romero, known for his Night of the Living Dead series, and written by Stephen King, known for being Stephen King. Pretty sure Stephen King is a household name, so I will not be going over his work, but I am a big fan of his writing. Why, I remember as a wee little spooky darling, I would take my battered copy of Misery to sixth grade silent reading, then promptly get it confiscated for being too disturbing and sent to the school counselor. Oh, these childhood memories really touch my soul. Creepshow the movie was inspired by the Tales from the Crypt comic, which was published from 1950 to 1955. It followed a horror anthology format and the stories were hosted by the Crypt Keeper, an ominous recluse who was more frightening in the early issues. He would grace the panels, shrouded in darkness with his death-like face and questionable haircut. Over time, he evolved into a more comedic host who threw out groan-worthy puns, and that portrayal was further expanded on for the television show. Creepshow has its own version of the Crypt Keeper named The Creep. What a coincidence! He shares a nickname with my ex-boyfriend much more handsome, though. In the movie, the creep silently introduces and closes out short horror stories from the fictional comic Creepshow. The film's entire aesthetic is designed around the comic, with garish, high-contrast effects and visuals. It's very creepy, for lack of better words. And you're probably wondering what the film has to offer besides its homage to Tales from the Crypt and its dark comedic writing. Well, let me tell you, it has. Ted Danson as a sea monster. It's a good film. It was written with tender affection for the horror genre, and it perfectly balances the truly disturbing with humor. Though be warned, this is not the same type of comedy you would get a quick giggle from. It's more in the realm of dark, eccentric comedy, when you see something so jarring that your only response is to laugh. After all, what is laughter other than a reaction to something that surprises your brain? Or maybe it's dick jokes, I don't remember. In 2018, a Creepshow television series was announced and would be distributed by the streaming service Shudder. Season 1 was released in 2019 and Season 2 in 2021. Each episode consists of two stories and uses the comic book format similar to the film. I watched a few episodes and enjoyed them, though it was not until the first episode of Season 2 that I was fully taken off guard. But if you're not gonna behave, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. That's right, we have Bob Ross versus the Deadites. I'm a Bob Ross fan, I'm an Evil Dead fan, so it would just make sense that I would need to watch this episode appropriately titled Public Television of the Dead. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, what the fuck, how is that possible? He was a soft-spoken oil painter who made painting easy and accessible to the public and also granted housing to small rodents. In this episode, a Bob Ross-like character gets involved with literal Deadites from the Evil Dead series and it's really, really weird. I don't even know if it works as a creep show story, but let's dive into it and see what we can see. Oh, hey, I had that television when I was young. Remember when TVs had fake drawers? <laughs> Those were the days. Two kids are watching a show called Mrs. Bookberry's Magical Library, a show on public access that relies on donations from the community to keep them afloat. I assume this is a lamb chop parody, though I don't recall Sherry Lewis being this profane. That's where we ask all the mommies and daddies out there to fuck. This puppet looks like a country bear jamboree reject and honestly, it gives me the Ghiblis. Mrs. Bookberry explains that there will be a pledge drive later that night. On channel 13, of course, this is a horror show and you will know it's a horror show, goddammit. I believe this story is meant to take place somewhere in the mid 80s to early 90s, just judging by the settings and costume design. Mrs. Bookberry is more of a Mrs. Bitchberry. She yells at the station manager, demands the most popular time slot, threatens to leave if she doesn't get it, then as an encore, pulls out some blatant racism. You got me, sister? Not wanting any trouble, the station manager, Claudia, says she can have the time slot. Cut to the love of painting, starring Norm Roberts. This show isn't even a teensy bit subtle about this character. It is Bob Ross, this is how he talks, this is the joy of painting. So from all of us here at the station, happy painting. God bless. Happy painting, God bless, and we'll see you soon. Just beat the devil out of it. There we go, shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. And the hair is almost right. More bozo than Bob Ross, but they can use some creative license here, I suppose. I understand that this is a comedic episode, but I am mildly insulted that they put so much work into the Bob Ross character but did not get his technique down. Everyone knows that Bob Ross never finishes on the background. He does that first. I am full of artist anger. 
Claudia breaks the bad news to Norm that they will be canceling the love of painting. He was very calm about the news, and Claudia asks the cameraman, George, how he stays so laid back. He tells her he had changed after serving in Vietnam. Okay, a couple things to note. Bob Ross was in the Air Force, and it is true that he developed a dislike for the disciplinarian job of Master Sergeant. Ross was an extremely private person, but he did say that during his time stationed in Alaska, he fell in love with the mountains and scenery and learned painting techniques. My dad was actually drafted to Vietnam, and he too came back very soft-spoken, promoting peace and overall denouncing war, though he sadly did not end up with a huge-ass perm with a squirrel in it. So yeah, the tough guy turning into an optimistic, gentle soul is definitely a story that's been told both in fiction and non, though I've never seen it told quite this way. We cut to the next show, The Appraiser's Road Trip. Yes, that is Ted Raimi, and yes, he is playing himself. He brought a familiar looking book to get appraised, bound in flesh and inked in blood. I mean, the book is mint. The appraiser actually recognizes it as the Book of the Dead and opens it, fascinated by the incantations. Unluckily for everyone in the studio, the appraiser can read Sumerian. Listen to these wretched incantations. Oh no. Uh, um, may maybe don't read it. Unfortunately, it's too late and Ted Raimi is turned into a deadite. He kills the appraiser with the book's key and takes up the job of asking for pledges from the audience. Aw, happy little deadite. Hey, I don't see any Van Dyke Brown on that palette. Norm closes out the show by saying goodbye, and during this, the set is crashed by Raimi. Norm plunges the end of a paintbrush into the back of his head, though it only agitates him further. Norm then shows him his war tattoo and decks the deadite in the face over and over. He then swallows some paint thinner and blows it over a lighter, setting Raimi's face ablaze. Death by turpentine. I hope it was odorless. Meanwhile, Mrs. Bookberry is losing her goddamn mind. You worthless piece of shit. I'm not worthless, Daddy. Daddy? Oh, girl. Your mother and I will be very disappointed if you're not good on the show tonight. Oh, the literal kind of daddy. That's not as fun. As she's talking to her... Uh, father, who I guess possessed this puppet, Raimi shows up at her door. Meanwhile, Norm, Claudia, and George try to figure out what is happening. With some very Evil Dead editing, Bookberry is shown to now be a deadite. Are you proud of me now, Daddy? Since it was all recorded, George is able to see what happened with the Book of the Dead. They begin looking for the book and find it in the dead appraiser's hand. While this is all going on, Raimi and Bookberry start broadcasting their pledge drive. Welp. And you fucking I'm so fired. The idea is that Bookberry will read the incantations and it will reach even more people for their deadite army. But no worries, the WQPS crew is on it. We're gonna bait the devil out of you. Yeah, so Norm starts shooting at them with Civil War coins and it appears to be working? And just in case you needed more Evil Dead references... Groovy. Unfortunately, the possessed puppet, named Henrietta of course, begins reading the book. It'd be cute if it wasn't not. Norm punts the abomination out the window. Daddy, no! Then he gets the key and locks the book, killing the deadites and saving the day. The love of painting is back on the air, broadcasted to creative little deadites everywhere. I can't wait to see what kind of happy accidents these darklings will make. The episode then transitions back to the comic book style, and it is closed out by the creep. Okay, final thoughts. My initial reaction was delight. It's a great Evil Dead episode. The editing is tight, the corny one-liners are good, it's ridiculous and funny, and I'm glad I watched it. Badass Bob Ross, the story that needs to be told. However, I realized while writing this script that I had forgotten this was an episode of Creepshow. It stands out in a way that doesn't really follow the series, the original series, or anything else besides the Evil Dead. This is an anthology, so there's gonna be hits and misses, but I didn't expect a hit that was based on the fact that was just a different style completely than Creepshow. There were less of the jarring backgrounds, hardly any comic book references or shots that resemble a comic book pain, and unlike other episodes that have a pretty distinguishable moral, there just isn't one here. There's a little emphasis on karma, but that's not really the main theme. I'm not sure there is one, it's just a perfectly executed homage to the Evil Dead combined with a very strange homage to Bob Ross. I did watch several other episodes from this anthology, and they do fall more in line with the original movie. Movie. They vary in theme and in gore levels, but they do tend to follow a formula. And usually, I knew what to expect. I did not expect this. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's just a weird thing. I definitely recommend watching this if you love Sam Raimi films, or if you like imagining Bob Ross as some badass who fights the dead. Ted Raimi is very funny in this role, and I really did get a lot of laughs from the sheer absurdity of the entire thing. Do you have the key? Um, I lost it. Oh. How unfortunate. But then it was found. 
it's gonna be a good time, even if it doesn't quite fit in with Creepshow. If you have seen this new show and have suggestions for an episode you'd like me to take a look at, please leave a suggestion in the comments, and until next time, stay spooky. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching this breakdown of the Creepshow episode, Public Television of the Dead. I hope you give it a shot. If you're interested in more of my content, I have plenty to offer. But first, I want to give a shout out to my spooky patrons who not only keep this channel afloat, they are also full of wonderful video suggestions and feedback. If you want to support the channel, please consider donating a few dollars to my campaign, and if you don't want to, that's okay, maybe give me a like and a share if you feel inclined. If you want to watch more of my videos, I have a few suggestions up on the screen. On the left is a breakdown of one of the strangest Goosebumps episodes I've ever seen, and on the right is a breakdown of a highly questionable X-Files episode, and if these don't interest you, I have a lot to choose from on the channel, check it out. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.